example of an induction proof where the theorem that we're proving involves an inequality. For the most part, this uh, induction proof, the steps will be exactly the same as in every other proof, but there's one detail that's a little different, so let's give it a shot. My theorem states that 5 to the n plus 9 is less than 6 to the n for all positive integers greater than or equal to 2. Uh, as always, I'll start with my base case. <clears throat> Note that in my theorem, the smallest case for which this is true is actually n equal to 2. So let me evaluate the quantity on the left-hand side. In the n equals 2 case, so I'll have 5 squared plus 9 is 34. On the right-hand side, I'll have 6 squared, which is 36. And sure enough, 34, the left-hand side, is less than 36 as required. So my base case checks out. Inductive hypothesis will be essentially uh, the same as in every other inductive proof. I'm going to... I'm going to assume, let's see, 5 to the k plus 9 is less than 6 to the k for an arbitrary Positive integer k uh, k uh, again does have to be greater than or equal to two. Okay, uh, my inductive step will start out um, as I expect in my inductive step. I'm going to consider the quantity on the left hand side in the k plus 1 case. So here I'm going to consider 5 the k plus 1 plus 9. And looking at my inductive hypothesis, I know that I've got something to plug in, well, essentially for 5 to the k. So let me start by uh, rewriting this as 5 times 5 to the k. Plus I've got that 9 there. Then let me actually back up to my inductive hypothesis because I want to do a substitution here for this 5 to the k. But my inductive hypothesis right now doesn't have 5 to the k isolated. So let me actually back up to my inductive hypothesis and state uh, that is, <clears throat> I'm going to assume 5 to the k is less than 6 to the k minus 9. So now I can make this substitution for 5 to the k down here in my inductive step. But the trick is, is I can't say that this is equal to 5 to the k. Because my inductive hypothesis doesn't say that 5 to the k is equal to 6 to the k minus 9. It says that 5 to the k is less than 6 to the k minus 9. So in my inductive hypothesis, or sorry, down here in my inductive step, I can't, I can't say that this next step is going to be equal to what I had previously. I have to say that it's less than. So let me make that substitution. So I'm going to have 5 times, there's that 5 times. And I'm going to make the substitution for 5 to the k greater than 6 to the k minus 9. <coughs> So the first thing we notice that's different here is that instead of making substitutions that are directly equal, which made a substitution that is less than, or sorry, that yields a quantity which is greater than the previous quantity, um, because that's the relationship that was given to us in the inductive hypothesis. 
So now as I work through this in this inductive step, I'm going to do a couple other things that are a little different. First of all, let me just let me just work with this quantity here. So let me so now now uh, let me distribute this five. And when I do, the quantity that I'm getting is going to be equal to the quantity I have right now. So if I distribute that five, I get five times six to the k minus five times nine. Uh, that's obviously equal to. 5 times 6 to the k minus 45. Okay. The right hand side that I'm trying to develop here is just in terms of 6 to the k. So it'll be 6 to the k plus 1. That's what I want to end up with on the right hand side. The right hand side has no negative 45 in it. So I'd kind of like to just be able to drop this negative 45. I cannot. I cannot simply drop the negative 45 and say that this quantity here is equal to 5 times 6 to the k. This is false. This is false because 5 to the k 5 times 6 to the k minus 45 is not the same as 5 to times 6 to the k. I can't just drop the negative 45. But in this context, I don't necessarily need things to be equal. I'm just trying to establish a relationship where one thing is less than something else. If I look at these two expressions, 5, to the, five times 6 to the k, 5 times 6 to the k minus 45, I think that this thing on the left is definitely less than this thing on the right. So what I'm going to do is um, instead of saying that those two expressions are equal to each other, I'm going to say that this new expression here is less than the previous expression. So I kind of cheated. I basically just crossed out this negative 45 because I didn't want it there. And in a normal induction proof, I wouldn't be able to do that because everything I do has to be equal to the previous step. But in this proof, since the relationship that we're trying to develop is just that one quantity is less than another quantity, I'm able, to, I'm able to get away with that. Okay, so let me kind of think about again what I'm trying to get here. I would like <clears throat> my right-hand side eventually to say 6 to the k plus 1. Again, I can't say that this is equal to 6 times 6 to the k. These two quantities are not equal. But what I'm trying to do right now is not show that there's two quantities that are equal. I'm trying to show that there are two quantities that are, sorry, the relationship is less than. And I can say that this quantity is less than the previous quantity. Basically, all I've done here is I've changed the, the coefficient of 5 to a 6, and that yields a larger quantity. So this, uh, this expression here is, in fact, 6 to the k plus 1. So now it's kind of hard to keep track of what we did. But let's start over here on the left. This is the quantity on the left in the k plus 1th case. That is equal to something, <clears throat> which is less than something, which is equal to something, which is equal to something, which is less than something, which is less than something, which is equal to something. So I can actually conclude here. <clears throat> that this quantity that we started with on the left, 5 to the k plus 1 plus 9, is in fact less than 6 to the k plus 1. <clears throat> so what's different about this is, to me, is just these couple steps here where I basically cheated and I made substitutions that weren't exactly true. I made substitutions that weren't equal to each other. But since the relationship that I was trying to establish in this proof is not equality, I was able to get away with it. Last step, I've got my conclusion. I'm going to say, therefore, 
by the principle of mathematical induction. Our theorem is true for all positive integers greater than or equal to 2. And that'll wrap up my proof. I gotta learn how to copy and paste this here. Wait for it. Wait for it. Period. Box it.